that really started uh, when he was a little boy. Right there in Boyle Heights, a Latino community, Mexicans were not allowed to swim in the swimming pool, except on a, a Sunday evening because they were going to disinfect the pool the next day. And my father was just a, a young boy, and he boycotted with a friend of his and then walked from Boyle Heights all the way to City Hall to protest the fact that Mexicans were not allowed to swim uh, at Evergreen. And that policy was changed. My father and my mother were, were the center of our life, and they are the ones that uh, modeled for us the importance of family, importance of community. My father's influence really was, was indirect in that he modeled for, for me and, and our family the importance of public service. And as a result, um, myself, my sister, and my brother, we have all gone into some kind of, of public service. The congressman was, was a fighter from the very beginning of his career. Uh, always in the community. He first ran for city council in 1947, and he lost. Uh, and then, lo and behold, the great project called voter registration hit Boyle Heights. When my father got elected to the Los Angeles City Council in, in 1949, there was a lot of discrimination and racism. And when he was inaugurated, and it was his first meeting at the City Council, he was introduced. And they introduced him as the Mexican councilman who speaks a Mexican. And my father had had a prepared speech. And he put down the speech and responded to that comment and made it very, very clear that he was uh, an American of Mexican descent and that he was proud of it. He came of political age when being a Latino w was not the popular thing to be when he ran for county supervisor in the late 1950s. And he went to bed thinking that he had won the election and then the next morning they mysteriously discovered, you know, like 30,000 ballots or something like that and he wasn't elected. He experienced discrimination firsthand. No fue fácil. Sufrimos mucho, uh, muchos desprecios, y, uh, pero uh, siempre nos acordábamos que si, si nosotros podíamos uh, abrir la puerta, como se dice, para que otros hispanos siguieran. What makes Ed Royval a, a giant is that he took on issues not just that were Latino. Uh, back in the early 80s, when people didn't know what AIDS or HIV was, he was truly the first congressperson in the nation to fight to get funding for AIDS research. He did the same thing when it came to Alzheimer's. I think that um, Roybal would be very proud of the National Institute on Aging. That would be one of the things that he really fought for, establishing a research center. I believe that my father focused uh, his career, even before he was in politics, on health, was because his mother died uh, at a very young age and was unable to get health care because they couldn't, couldn't afford it. My father uh, is also known for the fact that he is the one who invested in the Centers for Disease Control. And he put a lot of, of time and, and a lot of, uh, appropriated a lot of money into that. One of the heads of, um, of CDC when we were down there said that if it hadn't been for the help and the support of Ed Roybal, they would not have been able to eradicate polio in this country. He was the founder of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute, which he started the institute because when he went to Washington, he saw that there were no, uh, not only no Latinos working in Washington, but he also saw that young Latinos were not in Washington as interns and fellows. And he wanted to be able to create an avenue for them to influence public policy uh, in their adult life. Hay hombres y mujeres competentes en, en, en nuestras familias y que estamos listos a todo, a todo momento para representar no solamente al hispano, sino que representar a todo votante en los Estados Unidos. It's clear from his history. It is public service, the epitome of Edward R. Roybal. 
that was him. Anything about his background, what he did, the struggles, all the fights, everything that he did was public service. In 1999, the Naleo Educational Fund Board of Directors established a seat on the board for somebody from the Royal Ball family. And we have been honored to have, in service of the Naleo Educational Fund, Congresswoman Lucille Roybal Allard, who has continued in the path of her father, and she herself is a pioneer. A critical actor um, in the foundation of Naleo. Uh, first of all, by his position of being the only Latino congressman from California during that time. Mr. Roybal believed deeply that we are, as Latinos, an important element of American society, that we are the future of this country, and we need to participate. We need to participate as citizens, as voters, as elected and appointed officials, and that we needed an organization that was going to make sure that that happened, that there was a political empowerment of our community, and that has been Naleo's work, and that is Mr. Roybal's legacy. We are at the vanguard of making sure that the public is able to participate in American politics, not just Latinos, but we're a voice to make sure that our elections are accessible, that people are able to run to office and participate fully in our American political society. Hay todavía más que hacer, más que hacer principalmente para la educación de los nuestros, de nuestros hijos. Tenemos que ir al, al frente, hacer todo lo posible por no tener que caminar tres pasos atrás, sino que tres pasos al frente.